everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page eight, which is a duplicate of page one. And I'm starting with my pocket page. I'm gonna to try to remember to go over that because I've had some questions. People come back and say, how do I <laughs> how do I do this? Are you building it on a flat piece of paper? Or are you building it on a pocket page? So I'm gonna to try to remember to go over that. So on the open edges, you're going to add these flaps. I gotta tell you what it is. It's eight inches across by eight inches tall. You're gonna score a half inch and four and a half inches, and then you're gonna fold it in on itself. Okay, like that. And we're gonna add it to the edge. So you need two of those, one for the left side, one for the right side. There we go. Same thing, eight and three eighths by eight inches tall. You're gonna score a half inch, four and a half inches, fold it in on itself. There we go, lovely, lovely. Now you're gonna have um, two of these which are gonna be like um, side pockets and I'm gonna use a decorative border to trim this out but I'm not gonna do that until I've picked up my designer paper which I haven't done yet. So I want you to go ahead and cut these out, uh, cut this out and preserve it. Do not attach it to your flaps yet. These are four and a half inches wide by five inches tall, four and a half by five, on the four and a half inch side, you're gonna score it half inch, so that makes it four inches wide. And then on the five inch side, you're gonna score half inch, so it's four and a half inches tall. And I came up with this size because I'm using a six inch die. And when I start my diagonal on a four inch wide panel, I mean, after I, I fold my score in, it's four inches wide. That's just where the where it naturally landed. So that's why it's five inches tall. You could make it shorter if you wanted, but I thought that that way I can use the full six inches. Um, I'm also gonna show you what you can do if you don't have a die um, and want to um, still do a diagonal pocket, another way to achieve that. So you won't have to have a die. If you have a die, great. So go ahead and cut those out. Don't tape them and don't glue them down or uh, don't add tape and don't uh, adhere them to the flaps yet. When I run this through the um, the cutting machine, having the tape on the back of this makes it just really hard to get through. So we'll add the tape after we add our decorative edge. Okay, so that's it for page eight. Be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on page eight. And I wanna show you that we are going to do a decorative edge on these diagonal pockets here. And I've saved this one so we can go through it. I did it also on page one, but we'll go ahead and go through it again. So um, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna trim this page out five by four and a half, and then you're gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side and a half inch on the five inch side. So when you're finished, you're gonna have a four and a half by four inch uh, pocket or diagonal pocket. So then you're gonna trim out your decorative paper. I like to use a 16th inch border. So that means it's 1 8 inch narrower, 1 8 inch shorter than the panel I'm applying it to. I'll move this so that you don't have all that busyness in the background. So once you have it trimmed out with the border that you prefer, then you're gonna take that decorative paper and you're gonna push it toward the open corner, the side that does not have flanges on it, okay? And you're going to secure it in place. And I'm going to use some removable tape. So I'm just gonna add it to the edges to keep it from shifting around while I'm trying to trim it. And then I'm going to take my die and lay it down in a diagonal from the, this corner to this corner. And I'm not pointing to the designer paper, I'm pointing to the cardstock corner edge to edge, and then I'm gonna run it through my die machine. But before I do that, I am gonna secure it with some tape. I've got some washi tape here, I'll use this. Um, because as I put it in the die machine, sometimes the die wants to shift around. Um, and right now I need new plates. They're kind of bowed, which makes it highly likely that it's gonna shift. So just by adding a little tape, you'll save, save yourself a lot of aggravation. Okay. I'm going to put it in place and then I'm gonna flip it over and make sure that 
the edge of the die is actually in fact lined up with the edge of the cardstock. So I'll do one more verification, then I'm going to run it through the die machine, which is on the other side of the room, so we won't do that together. Okay, oops, did it, nope, see these released, okay. Nope, that's not right. See, it's not square, so I'm going to shift that over real quick. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to look for my die edges, and it's right exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to run it through the machine and be right back. ran it through the machine. So now we're going to remove all of our tape. And this is the piece we're salvaging. I'm just trying to be careful. The washi doesn't usually tear, but it's best to be careful. And then this is the side that we're just going to cut off. So it's just barely inside the line. So I'm going to trim that here and here. And then, then I'm going to go ahead and miter that corner. So when I fold it over, it won't be sticking out. It's going to get covered with paper anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and miter them. All right, so that is done. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and tape, put add tape to the back of this. Sorry, do a little bit housekeeping. And um, the way I like to do it is... The edge that's going to be sliding down, I want to um, be laid down first so that it doesn't necessarily get hung up on this one. It doesn't work perfectly, but it goes a long way to helping with that. ready. So now we've got um, this ready and we've trimmed out our uh, designer paper so it's going to fit on there just perfectly. Isn't that beautiful? I'll go ahead and ink the edges. I don't like heavy ink. I just like to knock off the white core which isn't so obvious when I'm using a, a cream um, cardstock but when you're laying it down on black cardstock it really pops out at you which I don't like. I don't want the focus to be on the edge of the paper. Okay, so that's ready to be laid down right here. And then this whole thing is um, pretty much ready to go on top of this flap. So we will install the pocket. I don't know why, but um, my die is leaving a trace of something. Um, we'll lay it down on the pocket, then we'll add our decorator paper, like so. Okay, so I'll be back in just a second. I've got to go get my glue lined up, and then I think I'll be ready. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page eight. Page eight is just like page one, so we've got two diagonal pockets that we're going to apply right here to the outer edges of both of these flaps. And I uh, think I have everything inked and trimmed, but as you know, when you dry fit and dry fit, sometimes it doesn't always work out, as I found out on page one. <laughs> I think I had over trimmed something, but it was early in the project, so I had plenty of um, design choices to go back to um, to trim something else out. Okay, so we are just making this flush with the edge of the flap. And actually, that's not very flush. I might try to straighten that out.
fishy since I haven't burnished it, but let's go ahead and get the left side in. Much better. So I know it's hard to see, but it is off just a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can't straighten that out. So rather than lifting the whole thing off, this edge looks pretty good. So what I'm going to try to do is affect the score line, which might allow me to get it closer to where it needs to be. Okay, that's an, that's an improvement. It's not great, but it's a little bit of an improvement. So if you have this problem and you're not happy with it and most of the time I really struggle if I don't get it straight on you can uh, lift it and try to reset it um, if you feel like you've burnished it in place and you're worried about it tearing your cardstock then I recommend this product called undo which um, you just place on where the tape is and um, you can even apply it to the outside and it'll soak through the paper and release the tape in just a matter of a few moments so I'm trying to decide if I can live with this <laughs> or if I want to lift it. I'm going to live with it. I'm going to live with it. Okay, so the next thing we've got are these beautiful red pieces, which are going to go like so. Actually, I'm going to do the liners first. And one of the reasons like why I like to do the liners is then when I'm applying the designer paper here, it's easier for me to see the cream edge. It's not cream against cream. Well, hello, Nala. She came to say hello. And I'm trying to see if I have a continuous pattern. And I don't, but that's okay. I'm still happy with it. I think, oh, maybe I do. And I had it upside down. Yeah, I do. So it is a continuous pattern. That's what I thought I did, but one piece was upside down. So I'm gonna stick it in, dry fit it real quick. Everything works out. We're going to get glue and get it down. Looks good. Hope everybody's doing well. It's a beautiful day here in San Diego. We are coming into some of the nicest weather of the year. Post spring, just a little, little before um, summer. It'll get hot here in the next couple months. So I got some exciting news this week. My son is graduating in June and they're actually gonna have a graduation ceremony. They're gonna have it at um, our, our baseball stadium for the Padres. So it's gonna have a lot of space around it, but I am so glad that he's gonna get to participate in an actual ceremony and not a drive-by, which is what they did last year. And I felt so bad for the graduating class that they didn't get that milestone but I'm, I'm thrilled that we are gonna at least for the moment unless things change um have some kind of a ceremony so that's exciting it's a big it's a big deal i remember when i graduated from high school it was a long time ago but it was quite the ordeal So I didn't mention it, but I was leaving the leading edge, the edge that I'm pushing into the diagonal pocket without glue for a reason. It just makes it easier to get it in the pocket and have a little bit of time to maneuver before you put it down. Because the paper goes all the way into the pocket, there is really no risk of um, sticking something in the pocket and then having the designer paper follow it back out. So we're, we're good to go. I'm happy with that. And it makes makes it a lot easier to um, wiggle it in, into its final location.
me. <laughs> I had pizza for lunch. That always gives me a little bit of heartburn. So that is looking pretty good. Yay! And then um, I don't have this designed yet, but you are going to cut a seven by seven and a half insert that's going to go in here and that's what's going to keep this whole page closed so seven by seven and a half that gives you a half inch border around um, exposed around the insert so i'm going to trim out that piece after i get done with everything else because i just don't i i want to make sure i don't run out of paper uh, on some of the main parts of the album and i haven't done my covers yet so i gotta Make sure I've got all that figured out before I do my inserts. Okay, eight by eight, and I forgot to tell you, 12 by 12, patterns and solids. Patterns and solids, 12 by 12, eight by eight. completely sure which which side I want up and which side I want down. These definitely go on the outside edges. And then we're going to add these. Okay, I'm going to start. I think I'm trying to decide if I want to do an alternating pattern. And I think I like this. On page one, I did not do an alternating pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the two bottom pieces in. And then I'll figure out if I need to further trim this, but it looks pretty close to what I need. Mm, actually, I think I made my gap too wide. I did. Okay, so I'm going to have to solve that problem. So how am I going to solve that problem? I'm first going to look and see if I have more of this paper um, that I don't have to cut off a big piece. So I'm going to shuffle through my um, scraps real quick. I don't know how I did that, but I did over trim it. And I have, there's a piece. And there's a piece, so I might be able to salvage this just by trimming these two out. So the first thing I need to do is make sure it's the right width. And it is. Okay. So I'm going to replace these two. And then I'll trim this piece out once I get my red pieces laid in. in so we'll go ahead and add these last pieces and then we'll trim this out
Okay. Yeah, I was just making sure I had the right orientation. There are some words in the background. They're very faint, but I do. They're going the right way. Go ahead and lay down our blue pieces too because they're just floating around. Oh, well, I needed to make a decision which pattern did I want up. This or this, and I think I want this. I'm just adding that so I can better see the border. Okay, now the last thing is to add, I even like it with the cream. I might, we do, it does this, all the collections come with a, a cream cardstock, but um, I don't know, I don't think I'll do that. Actually, both of these are a little bit narrower than I thought. may not work. Okay, I think this is going to be too narrow, so I'm, I need to pause and come up with a plan for these two spaces, and then we will be done with page eight. So, so as far as the main part of the album, I still need to come up with a solution here. And it will either, it'll be cream it or red um, because I want it to coordinate. Um, I want these two panels to be monochromatic because there's so much pattern going on here. So I'll be back in a few minutes with these trimmed out and, um, and then we'll know what pattern we're going to use. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I managed to find uh, scraps that are going to fit in this space and I've trimmed them out and I've got ink on them. So, and I didn't have to cut into a 12 by 12. I had already had um, just enough of this left over from a previous, from cutting into a previous 12 by 12. And I think it was actually the cover of this, but I'm not sure. I have to look at it again. And this is from, pretty sure it's 12 by 12. Yes, it's 12 by 12. Okay, there we go. I've got one more to go. So that is the inside of page eight. I'm gonna close everything up. 12 by 12. Let me double check, yeah. 12, 12 by 12. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This pattern's in solids. 
And this is from the 12 by 12, 8 by 8, 12 by 12, and 12 by 12 patterns and solids. Okay, so that's it. And then here's our seven by seven and a half inch insert, which I have not decorated. I will come back and do that um, before I finish up this video, but I'm not ready to do it right now because I haven't picked up my patterns. Okay, thanks everybody. It's Daphne, page eight. I'll be back soon and we'll cover the insert. Okay, everyone, um, I've decided I'm gonna use the signature page for the insert on page eight, I just love this image and I had one left over. So this is from the eight by eight collection and I just trimmed it down to fit the seven by seven and a half inch insert that holds page eight together. So that is it for page eight. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, in the next videos, I'll be going over the inside and outside of the book as well as installing the pages. Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create.